Please be seated. Secretary Rezor, General Westmoreland, distinguished members of the Congress, distinguished guests and members of the family. Our hearts and our hopes are turned to peace as we assemble here in the East Room this morning. All of our efforts are being bent in its pursuit. But in this company we hear again in our minds the sound of distant battles. This room echoes once more to those words that describe the heights of bravery in war, above and beyond the call of duty. Five heroic sons of America come to us today from the tortured fields of Vietnam. They come to remind us that so long as that conflict continues, our purpose and our hopes rest on the steadfast bravery of young men in battle. These five soldiers, in their separate moments of supreme testing, summoned a degree of courage that stirs wonder and respect and an overpowering pride in all of us. Through their spectacular courage, they set themselves apart in a very select company. They represent the contribution of more than a half a million young Americans to a world of order and of peace. Other bitter days and other battles still lie ahead. I cannot emphasize strongly enough that we have not attained peace, only the possibility of peace. We shall need in the days ahead all the courage and all the steadiness and all the wisdom that the brilliant commander of these men, General Westmoreland, has evidenced throughout this terrible ordeal and that these men bring evidence of here today. Other brave men will be called upon to perform other brave acts before the search for peace yields a settlement at the conference table. But men like these have brought us the distance that we've traveled. And men like these will see us the rest of the way. Freedom will be forever in their debt. And finally, that prize for which all the world hungers will be their monument, the work of heroes who stood fast when standing fast was the really the only true way to a lasting and to an honorable peace. Secretary Rezor will now read the citation. The President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress, March 5, 1863, has awarded in the name of the Congress the Medal of Honor to Chap Chaplain Angelo J. Litke, United States Army.
for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity in action at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty. On December 5, 1967, Chaplain Litke distinguished himself while serving with Company A, 4th Battalion, 12th Infantry, near Phuc Lac in the Republic of Vietnam. Company A came under intense fire from a battalion-sized enemy force. Observing two wounded men, Chaplain Litke moved within 15 meters of an enemy machine gun position to drag them to the relative safety of the landing zone. Inspired by his courageous actions, the company began placing a heavy volume of fire upon the enemy's positions. Chaplain Litke began moving upright through the enemy fire, administering last rites to the dying. Noticing another trapped and seriously wounded man, Chaplain Litke crawled to his aid, rolled on his back, placed the man on his chest, and crawled back to the landing zone. He returned to the action and it came upon a man entangled in dense underbrush. Intense enemy fire was directed at him, but Chaplain Litke calmly broke the vines and carried the man to the landing zone. Chaplain Litke stood up in the face of hostile fire and personally directed medevac helicopters into and out of the area. Despite painful wounds in the neck and foot, Chaplain Litke personally carried over 20 men to the landing zone for evacuation. Through his inspiration and heroic actions, Chaplain Litke saved the lives of a number of his comrades and enabled the company to repulse the enemy. His outstanding heroism and inspiration were in keeping with the highest traditions of the United States Army and reflect great credit upon himself and the armed forces of his country. President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress, March 3, 1863, has awarded in the name of the Congress the Medal of Honor to Captain James A. Taylor, United States Army, for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity in action at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty. Captain Taylor was serving as executive officer of Troop B, 1st Squadron, 1st Cavalry, on November 9, 1967, in the Republic of Vietnam. His troop was engaged in an attack on a fortified position when it came under intense enemy fire. One armored vehicle was hit immediately and all five crew members were wounded. Aware that the vehicle was in danger of exploding, Captain Taylor moved forward on foot and removed the crewmen to safety. Moments later, the vehicle exploded. As he was returning to his vehicle, a mortar round painfully wounded Captain Taylor yet he returned to his vehicle to relocate the medical evacuation zone closer to the front lines. As he was moving, he came under machine gun fire from an enemy position 50 yards away. Captain Taylor engaged the position with his own machine gun, killing three men. Upon arrival of the new at the new evacuation site, another vehicle was struck. Again, Captain Taylor rushed forward, pulled the wounded from the vehicle, and returned them to the evacuation site. His actions of valor were a source of inspiration to his troops and were responsible for saving the lives of a number of his fellow soldiers. His actions were in keeping with the highest traditions of the United States Army and reflect great credit upon himself and the armed forces of his country. President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress, March 3, 1863, has awarded in the name of the Congress the Medal of Honor to Sergeant Sammy L. Davis, United States Army, for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity in action at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty. Sergeant Sammy L. Davis distinguished himself on November 18, 1967, while serving as a cannoneer with Battery C, 2nd Battalion, 4th Artillery west of Cai Le, Republic of Vietnam. At approximately two o'clock in the morning, the fire support base came under heavy enemy mortar attack. Simultaneously, an estimated reinforced Viet Cong battalion launched a fierce ground assault. The attacking enemy drove to within 25 meters of the friendly positions. 
Only a river separated the Viet Cong from them. Detecting a nearby enemy position, Sergeant Davis seized a machine gun and provided covering fire for his gun crew. Despite his efforts, an enemy recoilless rifle round scored a direct hit upon the artillery piece. The blast hurled the crew from their weapon and blew Sergeant Davis into a foxhole. He struggled to his feet and returned to the howitzer, which was burning furiously. Disregarding a withering hail of enemy fire, he aimed and fired the howitzer, which rolled backward, knocking him violently to the ground. Undaunted, he returned to the weapon to fire again when an enemy mortar round exploded near his position, injuring him painfully. In complete disregard for his own safety, Sergeant Davis loaded and fired three more shells into the enemy. Disregarding his extensive injuries and inability to swim, Sergeant Davis picked up an air mattress and struck out across the deep river to rescue three wounded comrades on the far side. While the most seriously wounded soldier was helped across the river, Sergeant Davis protected the two remaining casualties until he could pull them to safety. His outstanding heroism and leadership were in keeping with the highest tradition of the United States Army and reflect great credit upon himself and the armed forces of his country. The President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress, March 3, 1863, has awarded in the name of the Congress the Medal of Honor to Specialist 5 Dwight H. Johnson, United States Army, for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity in action at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty. Specialist 5 Dwight H. Johnson distinguished himself on January 15, 1968, near Dak Tho, Republic of Vietnam. Specialist Johnson, a tank driver with Company B, 1st Battalion, 69th Armor, was a member of a reaction force moving to aid other elements of his platoon, which was in heavy contact with a battalion-sized North Vietnamese force. Specialist Johnson's tank threw a track and he became immobilized. Realizing that he could do no more as a driver, he climbed out armed only with a pistol. Despite intense hostile fire, Specialist Johnson killed several enemy soldiers before he had expended his ammunition. Returning to his tank through a heavy volume of fire, he obtained a submachine gun with which to continue his fight against the advancing enemy. Engaged in extremely close combat, when the last of his ammunition was expended, he killed an enemy soldier with the stock end of his submachine gun. Now weaponless, he ignored the enemy fire around him, climbed into his platoon sergeant's tank, extricated a wounded crew member and carried him to an armored personnel carrier. He then returned to the same tank and assisted in firing the main gun until it jammed. Specialist Johnson again left the tank and armed only with a pistol engaged several North Vietnamese troops. Fighting his way through devastating fire and remounting his own immobilized tank, he remained fully exposed to the enemy as he engaged him with the tank's externally mounted machine gun. Buscius Johnson's conspicuous gallantry at the risk of his life is in keeping with the highest traditions of the military service and reflects great credit upon himself and the United States Army. The President of the United States of America authorized by Act of Congress, March 3, 1863, has awarded in the name of the Congress the Medal of Honor to Specialist Four Gary G. Wetzel, United States Army, for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity in action at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty. Specialist Four Gary G. Wetzel, 173rd Assault Helicopter Company, distinguished himself near Ap Dong An in the Republic of Vietnam. On January 8, 1968, Specialist Wetzel was serving as a door gunner aboard a helicopter which was part of an insertion force trapped in the landing zone by intense and deadly hostile fires. He was going to the aid of his aircraft commander when he was blown into a rice paddy and critically wounded. Although bleeding profusely due to severe wounds, he staggered back to his original position and took the enemy forces under fire. His machine gun was the only weapon placing effective fire on the enemy at that time. 
Specialist Wetzel remained at his position until he had eliminated the automatic weapons emplacement that had been inflicting heavy casualties on the American troops. Refusing to attend to his own extensive wounds, he attempted to return to the aid of his aircraft commander, but passed out from loss of blood. Regaining consciousness, he persisted in his efforts to drag himself to the aid of his fellow crewmen. Specialist Wetzel displayed extraordinary heroism at the risk of his own life. His gallant, his gallant actions were in keeping with the highest traditions of the United States Army and reflect great credit upon himself and the armed forces of his country. Someone said uh, some time ago, how many of these things has the president awarded? And that uh, caused me to reflect a little bit about uh, these things, these medals of honor. There are some four and a half million people that make up the defense of this country, military and civilian. And in the history of the Congressional Medal of Honor, there have been something like a little over 3,000 awarded. And this president has awarded, I believe, less than 30. Out of 200 million Americans, I have uh, awarded only 30 Congressional Medals of Honor. And to these modest men who never thought that they would be here any more than I ever thought I would be where I am, I want to remind you of what another president said upon another occasion, that I'd rather be able to have that blue band around my neck with a Congressional Medal of Honor than to be the President of the United States. That is an honor that the, is not accorded to the President. Although he occupies uh, the honored uh, position formerly held by Black Jack Pershing and formerly held by George Marshall, General Westmoreland, their brilliant commander, cannot wear that blue ribbon. It goes to a very select and special group of men. And you are a part of that group. So to you and your families, uh, on behalf of all the people of this country and the free world, whose you have sought to protect and whose freedom you have tried to ensure. I say we thank you and we're grateful to you. And we are proud of the honor that the Congress has uh, authorized be conferred upon you. I hope and I believe that your efforts will not have been in in vain. And as long as Americans uh, love their liberty and revere their freedom, they'll owe a very special debt to you men who wear that blue ribbon. And to your families, we'll have a little reception line, and I hope to be able to thank each of you who've gone through this with them, too. Thank you very much.